This happened at my old apartment where I lived for a few years. It's been a number of years since I moved, but I had a bad experience with some of my neighbors while I was there, and that's what this story is about. The building had character because it was older. It looked to be at least a hundred years old, and it was red brick on the outside. My unit was small, but it had charm. It was the whole top floor of the house. Some parts of my place had slanted ceilings from the angle of the roof, so it was an awkward space to live in. It did have its benefits though, especially the balcony, which offered views of the city skyline. The neighbors on the main floor were a group of three guys, all in their early 20s, and they were attending the nearby college. I didn't know them well, because I was a few years out of college, and over the whole lifestyle. They were definitely into partying, and I could hear them late into the night at least a few times each week. One of them, who I'll call Evan, was the most obnoxious. He had an arrogance about him that I noticed right away. Initially, I tried to coexist peacefully. I introduced myself one afternoon, offering a friendly, if somewhat tentative, olive branch. Evan was cordial enough, shaking my hand with a grip that was a little too firm. Their gatherings grew more frequent and louder. I never complained at first, even though the noise could be a bit much. One thing that really bothered me, though, was that they started hanging out on the balcony that was off my apartment. It was on my floor and led right into my place. There was a fire escape from the balcony that led all the way down to the ground, so they were using that to come up. It was technically part of my place, but it became their preferred spot for hanging out late at night. I reached my breaking point one night, when their regular noise turned to outright shouting. It was just past two in the morning on a Thursday, so some peace and quiet seemed reasonable. If they would have just stayed in their own apartment, then I would have let it go, but a group of three guys were just outside my window, on the small balcony that was supposed to be part of my apartment. They never asked to use it, just came up uninvited. Eventually, I went out to confront them. At first I tried to be nice, but they were drunk, and I could tell that they weren't going to be reasonable. Evan stepped forward with an aggressive posture. This balcony is as much mine as it is yours, he sneered. A statement so blatantly false that it took me aback. Not wanting to get into a brawl with three drunk college guys, I gave up and closed the door to the balcony. After I left, I heard one of them yell something like, Yeah, that's what I thought. I went back to bed, but didn't fall asleep until 3.30 at the earliest. The next day after work, I called the landlord, hoping he would talk to the guys. However, he didn't want to get involved. He pretty much told me to figure it out myself, so I didn't know what to do. I began staying at my girlfriend's house at least a few nights each week to avoid them, but it was still a pretty big problem. One night on the weekend, I went out with my friends and had a few drinks. I was far from drunk, but I had about four beers, so I was tipsy. When I was walking to the house, I could see three people on the balcony at the front. I knew they were at it again. I went up the stairs to my place, and when I got inside, the noise was really loud. They had music, and they were talking very loudly. I sat there fuming with anger for a few minutes, before I decided to confront them again. This time I wasn't planning on being so nice. I opened the curtains, and saw those three neighbors of mine. They looked over to me, but didn't show me the respect of turning down the music. I opened the door and stepped out. Evan looked at me, and then I shouted at them to F off. Evan stood up and got in my face. We were chest to chest yelling at each other, and then he shoved me back. My back hit the door frame of the house, and as soon as I recovered, I shoved him back. He stumbled backwards into the railing of the balcony. As soon as his hip hit the black iron rail, he lost his balance and tumbled over the side. As soon as I saw that, I knew that I messed up. A fall from the second floor could easily do some serious damage, depending on how he fell. It was grass below, but it was still really dangerous. I stood back and his friends went to check on him. To my relief, he seemed to be okay, but it was still not a good night for me. After the fall, the guys left the balcony, but I don't know if they took him to the hospital or not. They never called the cops for what I did, but I always knew that they had that over me. Even though he hit me first, there were two witnesses that could have spun things in any way they wanted. I never felt comfortable in that apartment again, because I had three full-blown enemies right below my feet at all times. Part of me was scared that they would press charges, another part of me was scared that they would retaliate in some way. I didn't stay long enough to find out. I put my month's notice in soon after the accident, and stayed at my girlfriend's house almost every night before I moved out. I know I'm not completely innocent in all of this, but it was an accident, and those guys were real jerks.
When I was in my 20s, I moved to a new city for a job opportunity and found myself living alone in an apartment building. There was a large 25-floor tower where people lived in close quarters yet hardly knew each other. I was no different and didn't put much effort into getting to know anyone at first. I came there for work and my job took up most of my time. I was still young and trying to learn as much as possible, so I didn't think I had time for much else. My life was a simple routine. Work, home, and the occasional trip to visit family. I wasn't the type to make friends easily, so I spent most of my free time alone. I'm an avid reader and usually spend at least two hours every night with a book on my couch. I had been there for about a month and nothing really happened. Then I started noticing one of my neighbors. This man was slightly older, with a haggard appearance, seemed to be everywhere. We'll call him Stan for this story, but I don't know what his name really was. Stan lingered in the hallways all the time. That was weird, and at first I thought he was a homeless guy who had snuck in, but I later found out that he lived in the building. Not on my floor, but he definitely had a place there. There was something about him that made me anxious whenever I passed him by. One evening, I was reading a book in my apartment, and I heard a soft noise from just outside my door. Peering through the peephole, I saw Stan sitting on the floor of my hallway, just outside my unit. His back was against the wall opposite my apartment. I didn't know what to do, and I didn't know why he was there. Maybe he was waiting for me to come out, and if that was the case, then I was worried about what he might do. I didn't dare to go out while he was there, which I wasn't planning to do anyway. I ignored him and went back to my book after double checking that the door was locked. Before I went to bed, I checked again and he was still out there. That meant he was sitting there for at least an hour that I know of. The next day when I went out for work, he was thankfully gone. But on the floor beside my door was a small pile of garbage. There was an empty Coke can and some food wrappers that must have come from that weird neighbor of mine. I saw Stan around like usual for the next few days, and then something else happened. It was about 10 at night, and I was about to take a shower before bed. Just as soon as I turned on the water, I heard someone try to open my front door. I looked out the peephole, but there was nobody there. After waiting for about 10 seconds, I cracked the door open and peeked down the hallway. My creepy neighbor was there in the hall, walking away. It looked like he was holding an empty garbage bag, making me think that he was going to rob me. These incidents compelled me to reach out to my other neighbors and see if anyone else had had similar experiences. I met a young couple, Sarah and Tom, who lived a few doors down. I also talked to an older lady named June. As we shared our experiences, the picture began to emerge of a man deeply troubled. Sarah and Tom told me about a time when they found him standing silently in the laundry room, staring at the machines without using them. June mentioned that he once followed her to the mailroom, muttering to himself. We all agreed that his behavior was not just odd, it was alarming. Some time passed, and eventually he was gone. I didn't know why at first, but one evening, I ran into Tom in the mailroom. He told me that Stan was arrested and kicked out of the building. Tom told me that he had broken into an apartment a few floors below mine, which I think was his floor. He had tried to force his way in, but when the occupant got the door closed, he kicked it down. Luckily nobody was hurt but the person called the cops and Stan was arrested. I don't know what happened to him after that, but I never saw him again. I hope he got help for whatever was going on, but chances are that he did some time in jail and then got kicked out of the building. Knowing that he was capable of breaking down one of those doors, I was even more creeped about the incidents that happened to me. All that time that he was sitting outside my door, he could have broken it down at any point, but for whatever reason, he decided not to. I still don't know why, but I'm glad that he spared me. I grew up in a middle-class neighborhood that was fairly new. It was mostly single-family homes, but there was also an apartment complex a few doors down from our house. Since it was all rentals, the people who lived in the apartments would come and go a lot. A few of my good friends lived there, so I would hang out there sometimes. One summer, a new family moved into the apartments, they had a son named Manny who was about my age, and we soon found out that we'd be classmates. Manny was different right from the start. He wasn't like the other kids that I knew, not in a bad way at first though. We started hanging out in the summer when he was getting settled in, and we had a lot of fun right away. There was never a dull moment when he was around, because he was really funny and always up for anything. We began hanging out because that's what you do when you're kids. Manny always had ideas for something to do, but his ideas weren't always good. 
In fact, sometimes they were downright scary. I remember one day at his apartment vividly. We were all there, a bunch of us, just hanging out. It was me, Manny, Brent, and my brother Joseph. Manny's mom was out, and we were watching TV in their living room. Then out of nowhere, Manny turned to Brent and said that he could kill him if he wanted to. We all laughed it off, nervous awkward laughter, but inside I felt weird. That wasn't normal kid stuff. It was like Manny was hoping to be challenged so that he could follow up. We all just sat there and didn't say a word. Brent was especially quiet. Then there was an incident that happened in the woods. We were hanging out on a weekend, and we were cutting through the woods near my house to go to the park. When we were on one of the forest trails, I found out that Manny had brought a water bottle filled with gasoline. He wanted to start a fire and watch it burn. We managed to talk him out of it, and later in the day, he said that he was just messing around. I didn't believe him though, because I could smell the gasoline. I still don't know where he got it from. When school started in September, I found out that I was in the same class with most of my friends, including Manny. We were still hanging out with him at that point, but to be honest, I was getting scared of him. In the first week of school, Manny got into a fight with one of the other guys in our class. Not one of my close friends, but a decent guy that most people liked. I never knew what caused the fight, but I think Manny started it. Another time, he was messing around in class, and our teacher told him to be quiet. Manny stood up from his desk and got in our teacher's face like he was going to fight. Luckily, he never threw a punch, but it was tense. Some other smaller things happened, and because of all of that, me and my friends tried to phase him out of our group. We would avoid him at lunch and not invite him when we were hanging out after school and on the weekends. One night when I was at Brent's place in the apartments, I saw Manny on my way home. He glared at me like he wanted to kill me, but didn't say or do anything right away. I was scared though. That night, I woke up to a loud crashing sound from downstairs. It was the sound of glass breaking. My dad got up to check it out, thinking it was a burglar or something. When he went down, all he found was a broken window and a large rock on the floor in our front hallway. My dad searched the house, but there was nobody there. I thought it was Manny, because there was nobody else around who would do something like that. But since I couldn't prove it, we didn't confront his mom about it. The next day at school, though, he basically confessed. He was bragging about it to some other guys and said that he was going to kill me and my family next time. The police got involved after that. They warned Manny and told him there would be consequences if he didn't stop. I thought there should have been consequences right away, but I guess it's more complicated for minors. He stayed away from me for the next few months, but his family moved away before the school year ended. I don't know what the reason was for him leaving, and I'm not even sure if it was his choice. Manny had definitely done enough to be expelled from our school, so maybe it was that. I hope he ended up somewhere that could handle severe behavioral problems, but I'm not sure how likely that is. Our school systems are not the best, so programs like that are very few. All I know is that he's just a memory now. About 10 years ago, I moved to a new house with my family. I had a one-year-old son, Felix, with my wife, Jenna. We had been living in a cramped apartment up until then, so a full house was a good step up for us. My wife recently went back to work, so our finances were looking pretty good. That's why we were able to make the move. We were planning on growing our family too, so we needed the space. It was a four-bedroom, two-story house at the end of a dead-end street, with a small creek on one side. Our next-door neighbors Frank and Heather were an older couple in their 50s. They were friendly at first and seemed to get along with everyone. They invited us over for dinner, introduced us around, and made us feel part of the community. Frank and Heather never had children. They told us that they had lived in their house for almost 20 years. They were among the longest standing residents in the area. We were at their house for dinner about a month after we moved in. It was our second time there, and it was the first time that something seemed off. For reasons that I still don't understand, Heather was on edge. At the time, it seemed like it could have been nothing, but she did seem upset. I don't think she said more than 10 words the whole night. She just sat there at the end of the table, nursing a glass of red wine while the rest of us talked. At one point, Frank put his hand on her shoulder, and she pulled away immediately. All couples go through a rough patch now and then, and it certainly wasn't our place to get involved in that kind of thing, especially since we were so new and didn't really know them yet. When we went home that night, Jenna mentioned it to me. I told her I noticed it too, but we let it go for the time being. 
We saw the two of them around for the next few weeks, and Heather never seemed normal in all that time. However, one day when I came home from work, I saw Jenna talking to Frank. They were on our front yard when I pulled my car into the driveway, so I only saw them in passing. Later that night, Jenna told me that Frank had been making inappropriate advances towards her. I was very shocked, because I had never seen anything like that, but it did make some sense. I never knew that guy very well, but there are definitely creeps out there, so maybe it was not that surprising. We agreed to keep our distance from them, hoping the mess would resolve itself. Even Jenna told me that there was nothing worth calling the police for, so we didn't have much choice but to let it go. However, Frank continued to act like nothing ever happened, even inviting me over for dinner. When he tried to talk to me, though, I always gave him the cold shoulder. This went on for a while, and eventually he seemed to back off. I was glad that he seemed to be getting it, but it was starting to feel like I had made an enemy. That was scary for us, because we didn't know what he was capable of. One night after we put Felix to bed, Jenna and I were in the living room watching TV. It was about 10 at night, and the room was pretty dark. All of a sudden, one of our motion sensor lights on the outside of the house turned on. It was the one on the side of the house, far away from the street, so we were alarmed. When I looked out the window, I saw Frank walking back to his house. The way our houses were laid out, there was no reason for him to be close enough to trip our lights. There was no fence, but he would have had to come at least 20 feet onto our property to trip the lights. He was definitely up to something. We both knew it. Another night, I was on the back porch smoking. I've quit, but at the time I was an occasional smoker, but never did it in the house. I had the outdoor lights on, and when I went back into the house, they were still on. My wife was in the kitchen at the time, and then we both went into the living room. After five or ten minutes, I thought I saw someone standing at the window. The outdoor lights were still on, but I would have thought they'd be off by then. I didn't make any sudden moves, wanting to catch him in the act if it was Frank. I quietly got up casually and walked into the kitchen, Then I burst out the back door and ran over to where the window was. He was there, standing at our window, and he didn't even try to run. The creepiest part is that he was holding his phone, and it looked like he was taking pictures through our window. I yelled at him to get lost, and probably said a lot of other words that I won't repeat. We called the cops that night, but they didn't do much. They gave him a warning to stay away from us, but it wasn't enough. We kept seeing him around, but never caught him red-handed again. The real problem was that we couldn't relax, and never knew what he would do next. Since we had a young child, there was no way we could stay in that neighborhood. The decision to leave wasn't easy. We had invested so much into that house, and envisioned our son growing up there. We put the house on the market, and within a few months, we found a buyer who was willing to accept the risk. I still think about Frank's wife Heather sometimes. We've discussed it, both Jenna and I believe Heather was tormented by what her husband was up to. She probably knew, and should have done something about it. But something about her made me think that it ate away at her. I don't know what they're up to now, but I wish the best for the others who live near them.